so we're back here with Mikey, who's uh, probably the biggest perfunctionist fan I've ever met. Uh, what did you say you do every day? So pretty much every day I go and watch a perfunctionist perfunc channel. Every really? Day, every video. <laughs> have you have you uh, not got a life? Is that what is that the reason? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because you're a guitar nerd, isn't yeah, it? I'm a yeah. Guitar nerd, yeah. Hello, and welcome back to the Profunctionist channel. In the last video, we were looking at the Rev D20 amplifier, a 20 watt amplifier with a two nuts torpedo built into the back of it. Lovely sounding amp, but one of the reasons I wanted to get it was to use it for live use. So if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you probably know that most of my content is on the Helix. I use it for most of the gigs I do, but then most of the gigs I do, I'm on in-ear monitors and the Helix is perfect for that. So I'll probably still continue to use that for those gigs, but for the ones where I'm not on in-ear monitors, I prefer to use a real tube amp or real valve amp. And uh, that is what I wanted to use the D24 as well. So the question in today's video is, is the Rev D20 loud enough for live use? So keep watching, we're gonna explore that and I'll give you my opinions towards the end as well. So in the couple of weeks that I've had it, I've managed to use it live a couple of times uh, on a couple of jam nights that I've been playing at. First of all, sounds great. I used two different types of uh, cabinets or two, two cabinets on two different jam nights with different speakers. One of them had cream backs in them. The one, the cab that I had was loaded with green backs in it or at least I remember seeing a green ring on the inside when I opened it up one time, so I'm sure that's what greenbacks means, isn't it? I, mean, I am looking to get a dedicated cab for that, a 2x12 cab, and I think I want to have creambacks in it, because it, it kind of tames that top end a bit. I found it a bit spiky with the, uh, with the greenbacks. But tone aside, was it loud enough? I found myself f feeling like it needed to be a bit louder. Others disagreed, they said it was l plenty loud. I found, I felt like it could not so much be louder, but it could do with having more headroom. Because when I had the boost pedal, the spark, the mini spark uh, engaged, it didn't feel like it was making it that much louder because I think it had kind of reached its saturation point. Because I tend to run the amp at about, where well, the master volume is at about three o'clock, usually two o'clock, three o'clock. And it's great to it's great to kind of cook get those uh, those tubes cooking, but it also means that there's less headroom. So that was my issue with it. Uh, is it loud enough? I think it is. I mean, it can be. It has been, and it has depended on the situation. And I do wonder if the different cabs also give out different um, levels of volume. I, I'm sure I read some of that cream backs are slightly quieter than greenbacks. I'm not sure if that's true. If you, if you know about that, let me know in the comments below because that, that interests me. <laughs> So as well as filming myself on these jam nights, it was good to film some other people playing as well because then I could concentrate on the filming. Uh, and there's this little kid who's been coming to one of the jam nights who's, who's really good, really good guitarist, really nice kid as well. 
I, I, I asked his opinion as well. So, yeah, check out check out little Mikey. He's uh, he's amazing. Using my phone here, we're here with Mikey and his dad, who's given me permission to use this footage for, uh, for the Profunctionist channel. Um, Actually, first of all, how old are you? Um, 13. You're 13? You're really damn good for a 13 year old guitarist, better than I was when I was 13. That's when I started, I think. How did you find the amp? Um, Nice. I like the overall tones, yeah. tones and because um, obviously like, it's quite low wattage, it's 20 watts. Yeah, did you think it could have been a bit louder? Uh, not really. You thought it was alright? Yeah. Okay, cool, alright. And you, you enjoyed, enjoyed it with the pedals and all that? Yeah. Cool, alright then. Would, uh, did you enjoy yourself tonight? Yeah, Good, hopefully we'll see you again on uh, up here soon as well. Right, so I'm here with Dave. This is uh, this is Mikey's dad, and he was just saying something interesting about the amp. So I was thinking it wasn't quite loud enough because I had my in my uh, earplugs in. But what were you saying, Dave, a second ago? Um, you can feel it's a lot louder out front here, um, and the quality is is quite loud. It, it's not. You can feel the loudness, if that yeah. makes sense. Oh, that's good. You know, it's, it's not muted or anything like that, and you can hear every note clear. Oh, that's good. So, so you, you didn't have any earplugs in, did you? No, no, I'm, I'm natural. Okay. <laughs> and the drum kit, at least the kick drum, was mic'd up today, as it usually is. Yeah. The amp is normally mic'd up as well, which I didn't use today. There's a two-note torpedo on the back of it, which I didn't use today. But you thought the amp was loud enough, even just, you know, all natural, as you say. Well, when I was sitting over there, and I could still hear your rent. So it's... You know, I was sitting over there, and I can still hear your guitar through the ramp, even though it went through the PR. Yeah. So. Well, that's good to know. All right, well, thanks for your... So one thing I thought about doing was adding a... I think they're called an, it's called an amp baffle. You may have seen people like Joe Bonamassa using it in front of his amps. It's that kind of clear kind of perspex screen that he puts in front of the speakers. I actually bought one of those a few years ago before I was using in-ear monitors. And I thought, well, not only is it meant to protect anyone in the front row from getting their head cut off uh, when you're using an amp uh, on a gig, it also kind of bounces the sound around the stage so you become a bit more audible to the other band members. So it's a nice way to, yeah, to spread the sound around the stage rather than it just beaming straight ahead. So I took my setup to one of the jams again for a second time to try using that amp baffle to see if it made much difference. And the results were quite interesting. <laughs>
Here is Mikey's opinion on using that shield. Although I tried to be clever when recording this, I should have brought my microphone set up like I've got here, but I, I didn't remember that I was going to be interviewing anyone. So I just used my, uh, the camera here and used the onboard microphone, but it's, it, picks up, it picked up a lot of background noise. So I was trying to be clever and I recorded the video and used my phone to record the audio separately so I could mix it in and get a clearer sound. Unfortunately, I must have done something really stupid because I seem to have not pressed record on this camera. So there's actually no footage, just the audio of that interview. So what I'll have to do now is just put a, an image of Mikey on the screen while you listen to what he had to say about, the, uh, about his experience with the, uh, with the baffle. Uh, and it kind of makes him out to look a bit like a, like a, a war correspondent talking about um, the goings on in some war-torn country abroad. So I apologize for that, but I don't know, maybe it makes him look cooler. Yeah, so yeah, how did you, how did you find the difference between using the shield and not using it? Um, there was quite a lot of difference. Um, yeah, like, as in the projection, was, there was a lot more projection. So, a lot more projection without it? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, exactly. you mentioned earlier that it was, actually, the war. it was actually kind of a bit quiet without yeah. uh, when it was in front. Yeah, because uh, the shield was probably blocking the speaker a little bit. So, when we took the shield away, you noticed a massive difference, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, and you preferred it without, did you? Yeah. Yeah, cool. And then we left it. We left it off for the rest of the gig because. Uh, yeah. so much more better. All right. So the question, the big question: If you were doing a gig with this setup, would you use that that shield or would you not use it? I probably wouldn't, unless no. unless it was Mike's up. Then okay. I might. All right. So there's Mikey's wise beyond his years. So at the other jam night that I managed to use my uh, new amp on, I brought my Hughes and Kettner cab, the one of the greenbacks in it. And I managed to shoot some footage just on my phone of my friend Dan taking a solo. And uh, just check it out now. Notice, if you look at the volume, the master volume, it's set to two o'clock and it's still quite loud, so it's coming through. So is it loud enough? In a lot of cases, yes. One thing that I do is I wear earplugs when I'm playing live now, I'm trying to look after these ears. And uh, it definitely changes how, you, how things sound. It makes everything a lot quieter than you might think they actually are. And I'll sometimes, on a, on a, like at the jam nights, I'll take my, my um, earplugs out to have a listen and it's really loud. So it's good to have the earplugs in. So that might, may affect my kind of comprehension of how loud the amp actually is. So what I have said previously is that, well, that's not loud enough, but I feel like it could be louder, which is funny because last year, Sorry, not last year, two years ago, uh, before I started the channel, I had the pleasure of using the Sir PT15 amplifier, a 15 watt amplifier, the, the, uh, the Pete Thorne amplifier. And I used my cab for that, and it was plenty loud enough. It was, uh, I, mean, I, did, I did still have it reasonably cranked, but there was definitely a lot of headroom. Uh, I could turn on a solo boost and it would get sufficiently loud enough, and I never had to worry about, about headroom. So, does make me wonder what's the difference there so you know if you have any any ideas why that might be you know stick them in the comments below i'll check those out if you've tried these amps before that i would love to hear your your opinion on on the d20 or even the sir or even the g20 by rev so with regards to the footage that you've seen there's a couple of things to keep in mind as well first of all is the position of where the camera or the or the where the microphone was Obviously, if it's nearer the amp, it will sound louder. If it's further away, you'll get a more, more of a sense of what the room sounds like. Also, some of it was filmed on my phone. And 
smartphones tend to have a bit of a like an algorithmic compression going on, so it's not going to be as accurate as say maybe this camera here, which I use the onboard microphone for, and just say it quite low. I think it should be more accurate on this on this camera to try and get a sense of what the room might sound like. So keep that in mind as well. What seems to be the case is the clear sonic perspex screen that I used didn't seem to help the situation in that in that instance. I remember thinking afterwards that it probably would be a good thing if it was a more powerful amplifier. If it was a 50 watt amplifier, 100 watt amplifier, that screen would be would be great. I think for 20 watts, you don't really need it. Um, OD, the drummer, said it sounded good either way from where he was next to me. What was that you were saying, OD? I was just saying uh, pretty much the same as Mikey, that um, with the shield in front on stage, it was fine. It kept the, a really nice sound on stage, but there wasn't enough projection. So if the cab was mic'd up, it would be great. It would keep the on-stage volume sensible um, and still really clear. But I think unless it's mic'd up, the shield, all it does is, is impede the sound getting to the audience in the normal way. All right, thank you. Thank you for your opinion, Odie. But bear in mind, uh, audience, that Odie is a drummer. So take his opinion for what you think it's worth. <laughs> Lager. <laughs> Out front, it seemed, well, in my experience, when, when, when other people were playing, it sounded louder without it. So it kind of didn't need to have that protection that you'd, you know, that you'd use that screen for. Mikey definitely seemed to agree that it sounded to him better without the screen. So I probably won't use that for that setup. Um, he definitely, I could see his eyes light up when, when, I, when, when he tried it without the, uh, without the, uh, the, the screen there. And he, he was like, oh, yeah, I like this. And he had the earplugs as well. I mean, how did you how did you find the uh, the amp? Was it loud enough for you, and how did it sound in general? I would say yes, yeah, very loud, very nice. Um, it's a good tone as well. Like I feel like you can get a right versatile tone out of it. Even I've only played it once, but I could definitely see the potential in it. But yeah, definitely loud enough, good tone, nice crunch. But like I said, very versatile. I've always do something like. But, uh, yeah, brilliant. Julian came on there and just basically said, Where, "Where's the gamiest tone?" Yeah. Put those pedals and done, you were kind of as yeah, simple. As, as you can tell, I'm probably like a, a much more heavier player, or yeah. I try to be, but yeah, it definitely, it definitely works. So that amp is a pedal platform and you're getting your tone mainly from the pedals. Okay. Um, it's only a 20 watt amp as well. Wow. Did you find it, honestly, did you find it loud enough from where you were? Generally, yes. From where I was, I mean, so I thought I could hear myself better than I could hear my own ear. <laughs> and good. I use 100 watt, but definitely 20 watt. Amazing. And when you were out here listening to other people playing through it, could you hear that amp, that particular amp? Definitely, yes, definitely. I could. I think the levels were very nice tonight, and the amp, if that if that was the, the lead guitarist on that side, I could hear the lead tone that I needed to hear. Yeah, because you were back here where we are now, and the, and the amp was kind of like over there, as a stage over there. Definitely. I mean, I'm I'm surprised. I mean, it's a little cute amp when I looked at it, but the 20 watt amp. Yeah. Brilliant. Did you find when you click when you stepped on the the, the solo boost? that it didn't give you much of a solo boost, or did you find that okay? 
Like in what terms? Like do you mean like gain or like just in, pure volume? Because when you when you clicked that solo boost, it's meant to make everything louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know it's like I, I did. I, I was looking at it like I think I would have picked the wrong end, but yes, I, I noticed that bit of a uh, bit of extra unique for a solo, Excellent. definitely. Oh, cool. So, would you be happy to use that amp if you were on a gig on a rock gig? Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I imagine it's very light as well, judging by the size of it. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm carrying an amp like this, I'm like, oh, here we go. But with that, I'd be like, right. Nice one, Tommy. Thanks a lot for that. Um, catch you next time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully, you've got the same amp. I'm sure I will. <laughs> on the other jam night, it was pretty loud. I mean, there was one point where I turned the amp down because it was too loud, and my friend Cameron on the drums is not exactly a quiet drummer. He, he hits the drums properly like you're supposed to, and I had to turn my amp down still. <laughs> I think I'm starting to form an opinion now. Is it loud enough? I think in a lot of cases, yes. And I guess it depends what you're playing as well. One reason why I liked the idea of recording at the jam night, the one where Mikey was on it, was that it's quite a loud stage and there's a lot of rock music going on. So if you're playing kind of like quieter stuff, jazz, funk, soul, type, the type stuff, blues even, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be fine. If you're getting to like the heavier stuff, yeah, you might need to uh, think about maybe getting some more uh, wattage going on. One thing I will say is that the amp does sound great. I'm not gonna knock it, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. The question in this video is just, is it loud enough? And if I had to pick yes or no, I would say yes. The caveat being headroom. If I can get more headroom, that would be nice. Uh, or maybe I'm just not using the right speaker for it. So there's lots of things to consider when it comes to whether the amp is loud enough or not. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, go on, get in. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> Come on, you. Everyone wants to see the dog. <laughs> anyway, let's leave it there. What, do you have any questions about the D20? Uh, anything else you'd like to see re with regards to it? I do have plans to put the Helix through it soon and see how it works as like a, a power stage for the, for the Helix. So would that interest you? Let me know in the comments below. Um, please feel free to like this video, subscribe and all of that. Anyway, if you made it this far, you're a legend. Thank you for watching. And thanks to Mikey, thanks to uh, Tommy and Odie and the people who are in this video and to the dog. And I'll see you guys in the next video.